Hi. In recent times, I've been experimenting with terrains and I've been using Gaia Pro, Vegetation Studio Pro. And today I was thinking about what is the real reason for having these two different products? And one of the things I think might be the difference is performance. So I know Vegetation Studio Pro requires things like the Burst Compiler. So I thought, well, maybe it's more performant. So today I'm going to try and experiment with performance differences. Now, there are so many differences out there that I'm only probably just scratching the surface. So things like baking, prefabs, I think you can bake prefabs into the things or the terrains or some baking of some sort. Certainly do lights and things like that, but as you can tell, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, but I give it a try and see how far I get with it. Now, if you're an expert in Gaia or Vegetation Studio Pro or just Unity Terrains in general and you see this video and you think, oh, you've missed that obvious thing here. You didn't press the bake button on that or you didn't press the compile button here or whatever it is, then please do let me know in the comments below. Okay, thanks. I've got here a very simple terrain, relatively small one, and I'm using Gaia with an Alpine Meadow biome. And what I've done is I've switched off almost everything in the spawner. So all it's doing is it's spawning some textures, which is the grass and the hills and stuff. And the little village that so gives us these buildings and the effects and audio. So everything else is switched off. And when I run this, I'm running on a desktop, so it's quite meaty, quite powerful. And I've got the Gaia's fly mode on, so you just fly around like you would in the editor. And if we keep a look at the FPSs, so I'm on about 200 there, and I'm kind of sprinting in the air here. So this is 175, so it's pretty high. Right. So that's good. Now, if we go back and add on the full Gaia set, so let's just put everything back on again. I'll just make sure we start from a clean benchmark. So clear everything off and we spawn the biome. So this will give us a nice kind of rich terrain. So the rocks going in. The villages, we're gonna get some grasses, some plants, some trees. As I say, just going through different sorts of grasses. And let's just make sure that the drawer is on the terrain. Yeah, just so I can see what will happen. Okay, now we'll press run now, so go to game. Okay, so you start flying around this scene and already we're at we're below 100 and we're sort of hitting around the 50 mark. And then if we just kind of fly around the scene, just gently, you can see it's quite significantly lower. And then if you move away, so we start looking at the kind of big grass and you can see the grass is sort of coming in it's a sort of cull level, I guess. And when it starts to do that, we are getting, you know, into the thirties. So that's, well, I guess, reasonably painful. I mean, you're not going to notice it too much playing a game. It's still okay, but really we can see that rendering these grasses is having quite the impact. You don't, yeah. I think these are the grasses mostly. So what kind of alternatives are there out there? So in this demo, I've turned off most of the biome stuff for Gaia. So go to the session manager and the Alpine meadow biome that I had. Oh, I've got my inspector locked. Uh, all we're doing is textures and the village spawner. 
So we'll spawn that. So somewhere there's a few buildings you can see in here. But the rest of it is pretty much turned off. And what I've done is I've gone into Vegetation Studio Pro and I've dragged and dropped a few prefabs into all these various objects. So I've got some trees, some large objects, some plants and some grass. And as you can see, I haven't really done much in terms of explaining to Vegetation Studio Pro where I'm going to put it. It's just stuck it literally everywhere. So I haven't put any rules in, even in the sea. But from a performance perspective, let's just see how that goes. So remember, we were down to about 50. Oops, let's sort that out. Down to about 50 frames per second. Um, when I was moving over with just a guy pro stuff. So now we've got all these trees, all these grasses. You can see here, they're all swaying in the wind, doing all the things that sort of plants do, some rocks, some little weedy plant things here, some mushrooms, all those kind of things. So anyway, let's fly over that at the speed we were doing before. So now we're at about 125 frames per second. So this is why People use things like Vegetation Studio Pro over the default Gaia because, just to be blunt, the performance is considerably better. That's certainly in the demo I have here. And I'll play around with the grass density because it's nowhere near, to be fair, the grass density we had before. So it might be comparing apples and with pears at the moment, but we'll. Uh, We'll see how that goes, but so far I'm quite impressed with Vegetation Studio Pro. We can see that kind of culling coming in here with the trees we saw before with the grass. Um, but we're not going below 100. Now I'm guessing that's because Vegetation Studio Pro makes a lot of use of things like the burst compiler and the slightly newer technologies that Unity now offers. As you can see, we're getting quite an interesting Sort of set up here. It's this guy creating these little this little village area. That's <laughs> a slightly slightly funky object there. Um, but generally, yeah, I think it's it's pretty good. And now I need to go into Vegetation Studio Pro and actually try and put some rules to make it a little bit more realistic, rather than the land where the trees took over. So now I've gone a bit mad with the Vegetation Studio Pro. So I've made sure that the tree line is roughly where it was with Gaia. So it's just slightly off the beach, but then doesn't really encroach on the land. And then most of the land is then covered in two types of grass, very high density. So let's see how the performance goes with this. I'm gonna get my CTS error. Ignore that for the moment. Right, so here we are, <laughs> massively dense, kind of bleached grass, because I haven't changed the tints on the grass yet. There's some logs and stuff in there. So let's see how we get on with this really dense grass. So what's the FPS like? Still over 100. I'm just going to move around as we see that kind of culling thing coming as the grass renders in the distance. We're down to about 30 frames per second, or 30 to 40 with Gaia. You can see that we're, you know, an additional 100 frames per second by using this technology. And we're getting roughly the same kind of result. And uh, this is literally two minutes of me playing with Vegetation Studio Pro, so I haven't done any, any real effort into Thing the rules in. You can see some of the trees are coming in as well. We'll just go down, take a look at the, see if the quality is okay. I'm getting these sort of ripples in as the density comes in. You probably wouldn't see that as a FPS. If 
This was just the uh, standard FPS controller. And I think it would do a very good job. And if you if it's performance that you're concerned about, then the performance is still really good. And the rendering is still pretty good. Okay, we've got a different kind of tree now. Did love those Gaia trees. These trees aren't too bad. I can add a load more trees I happen to have in various packs. Maybe even try to put the Gaia trees into VS Pro. Maybe I'll give that a go. Bark is nice. I think I probably made the grass go on the beach, haven't I? I need to sort that out. But the grass is probably in the sea. Yeah, it is. <laughs> I need to fix that up. It's quite a nice effect though. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, I can certainly see why people don't just rely on Gar Pro to do the vegetation, why they invest their time in looking at things like Vegetation Studio Pro. Is that a tree inside that building? There's a collider thing going on there. Another rule. But yeah, I'm quite happy with that. I think I shall probably push on. Things like this where, where you're getting this kind of big area here, what you can do is on the prefab of these buildings, you can put a vegetation studio mask on the prefab and you can define vegetation studio shouldn't put these sorts of grasses in and they kind of blend etc so I, I don't think this is going to be particularly a problem i do actually quite like the overgrown effect it's quite nice now to tackle this culling thing i really don't like this culling thing That'd be my next thing oh is it a water mill where's that coming oh no it's not weird thing here. Oh, it's raining again. That's my cue to stop this. <laughs> I'll see if I can improve the colour. So I, th I think I've figured it out with Vegetation Studio Pro how to do this sort of grass culling. Um, so if we look at the FPS, we're on roughly 170, 180. And in Vegetation Studio Pro, we've got this grass plant distance and if I was to move that up so it's bringing in those buildings you can see that that's cost us on the FPS if we move around we're now at about 70 So 60, so we probably wouldn't want to go much lower than that. So if I was to go just up to sort of right into that tree line, we're now hitting the 30 kind of frames per second we were seeing with Gaia. Although the distance is still a lot higher, but it's starting to get pretty kind of clunky. And you can still see that draw thing in the distance. Again, if we were actually at an FPS level, just kind of walking around, you're not going to see that. Let's just get to the edge here. Yeah, we come to that cliff and look over the hills and they're all kind of pre-rendered, but you're hitting 30 odd frames. If we were to drop that right down again I think it, 150 was the default so let's do that again so we're going to approach the hill and look over the hill and see what kind of rendering is happening to the grass in the distance you can see it's plain there you can't see the grass it hasn't been rendered and it's starting to come in it's just a little bit ugly 
but we are at 120 odd. So you maybe you could kind of tweak that. Let's say 170. Let's try that again. So come back off here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. What we are on 120 odd. You can still see in the forest there. It's kind of creeping in. It might take your eye off. But I must say, I mean, I'm using quite a big grass here, uh, quite densely packed. But we did that with Gaia too, so that's why I'm trying to make it a little bit fairer. The rain's coming in again. Let's just uh, stop that. The other thing to look at as well with these um, grasses, especially, uh, let's go to edit biomes. If we take a look at all these plants. What I could do is say disable shadows. Uh, disable shadows. Disable shadows. And then let's just run that. Ignore my CTS error. Yep, okay. So what are we on the vegetation settings? We're on 550, so that's quite the big setting. Hence we're on a low FPS. Very low FPS, let's get back down to 150. So this is the default, we're zooming along. And then we get that. So we just want to push that up to about 170. And we're still above 100 frames per second. You see just in the distance there, you've got that grass creep. The actual grass itself still looks pretty good. We're quite high up here, obviously, now. So get back down to terra firma. So you probably could maybe get away with a slightly longer distance now the shadows are off. Let's say maybe 180. That's not quite enough. Uh, 200. So 200, we're still above 100 FPS. And you can't really see, it kind of catches your eye that there's some movement in the forest. It's really nice grass there. Mm. I'd have to implement my can you be seen in grass code. I think with grass this size. But yeah, it looks, uh, I think it's pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. To make this whole thing greener, I think maybe we could um, go to the biomes, look at the grass itself. And yeah, the healthy color, the tint, we could, I think we could probably make it a bit greener. I'm kind of guessing how this works now. Oh, you can see this bit trend. That's better. Kind of too sickly green. And then the last grass. There's the last one, this one. Let's just bring that tint around again. Oof. Yeah, and I need my uh, 
some of these better at colours to do this. Certainly an awful lot greener now. Oh dear, that's too vibrant, isn't it? Oh well. Let's uh, just set that vegetation studio setting to, what did we say, about 200. Ignore the CTS error. Let's see what we've got now. Should be pretty much the same, but the grass is going to be a bit more of a green tint to it. Some very lush grass there, and then this dry grass, more yellowy, some real lush tints in there. You get the idea. Yeah, still, hmm. In the distance there, it's still a bit kind of weird looking. I think maybe you'd have to have some kind of, maybe sort of, the fog of war kind of thing, kind of mist to make that more presentable. I don't really want to go below 100. Let's try 320. Still not going to be enough. 250 should have it up quite high. So 250 be right on the yeah. The FPS is pretty grim now. We're looking at about 60. FPS. But obviously my density is way, way up on this grass. I mean, normally you'd be looking at just having a lot patchier grass than this. Uh, can I play with this now? Yeah, it looks like I can. So if we were to put the density up to a more sensible level. Is it kind of maybe about there? Probably want to play around with the distances, get it, you know, so it's just using the textures a bit more. And height is probably Something to do with the height, maybe, of the actual distance fall off. Okay, so it looks like there's an awful lot of other things that I haven't really looked at here. Yeah, I think there's an awful lot more to look at. But by those changes now, we're a lot we're not as dense. Because we're not as dense, the kind of redrawing thing you're not seeing as much of in the distance. And our FPS is way over 100. Unless you're really going to do like a massive cornfield type thing, I don't think you'd necessarily want as thick grass as this, maybe like a patch. So there's a lot to play with here. I don't think I'd want the grass on these slopes either, so again you'd want to be looking at the steepness rules, um, maximum steepness, maybe bringing that kind of thing in, reducing the where we see these sorts of grasses. Again lots of, lots of levers and switches to, to pull yet that I haven't really done anything with. It's kind of straight out of the box, just playing with it. But from a performance side, I think it, it definitely has an advantage over Gaia. So I think I'm going to be carrying on with this. So just to summarise, I'm using Gaia to do the terrain and the environment settings and Vegetation Studio Pro to do 
the grasses and the vegetation and the trees. So I think that's how I'm going to continue on and see if I can get this thing working. So one of the big differences between using Gaia and Vegetation Studio Pro is that out of the box Gaia comes with all the correct rules for placing different sorts of items in different kinds of situations. So here's a classic example where Guy has seen this kind of dip in a hill and sort of evaluated it as looking like it's going to be like a muddy patch, which is great. Uh, but Vegetation Studio Pro has no concept of this muddy patch, so it's just sticking the grass on it as it would do normally. So we have to put more effort into getting Vegetation Studio Pro to work with the terrain. In this particular example, um, coming to the grass section, and I'm looking down here and there is a terrain texture rules. And so you can say exclude particular textures. And I think this is texture for, it's kind of a bit of a guesswork. Yeah, so, so using that, that grass is no longer being put on that particular texture. So it, it's, it's doable to get Vegetation Studio Pro working with this. And you can see we've got these little mushrooms and rocks. So you might want to say the rocks are fine, but actually we don't really want the mushrooms on there. So we can come up to mushrooms and do the same thing. Terrain, texture rules, exclude. As I say, I don't really know which texture it is. I'm just kind of working through these and I've found that four seems to be the right one. Uh, and then the mushrooms go away. So it's doable, but I'm having to put a lot more extra work into getting this sort of prototype island working by doing it this way. So this is where you pay. This is the benefit of Gaia is it, everything looks really good, pretty much straight out of the box. Whereas I think Vegetation Studio Pro, whilst we get the benefits from it, uh, you're having to do a lot more work to define how all these things fit together. So that's another thing to think about. Finally, just to finish this off, I've gone a bit mad with uh, adding some new grasses. And as you can see, the frame rate is still good. A carpet of grass. I'm not sure whether I actually want these grasses, but just trying it out. go over the crest of the hill you can see the, where the rendering hasn't happened in the distance but we're just going to put up with that we've got a nice 100 plus frame rate so lots of different grasses in here it's coping with it pretty well come down into the woods and I'm using some of the Gaia trees that we had in there before because I really like those, really nice. So it's just to show that Vegetation Pro is pretty agnostic when it comes to the, the type of prefabs in there, as long as they're like speed trees and things, you know, basic requirements for a decent Unity tree. You should be able to cope with it. And come down to the edge of the beach here and you can see where I've got the rules, the height rules coming in. So none of these grasses are appearing below this line. And we can see the difference now between just a textured, blended textured ground and with it with grass. So obviously with the grass it obscures the textured ground. So I'm not really sure whether I really want this kind of grass blanket effect. But this is video app performance, so that's what we've tried out. Not sure what that shimmering effect is there. Come down to the water's edge. 
You got some rules here, as we can see, that I allowed the rocks, some of the rocks and some of the, that looks really odd. You can see here <laughs> where you have to choose your type of model correctly, because this is obviously a forest floor log rather than a one that should be on the beach. So those are the sorts of things you have to consider as well. But looking back into the carpet or grass, we go back into that. And we're still running it, what we're running at, over 100 frames per second. So from a performance standpoint, yeah, you can certainly cope with having this kind of field of tall grass if you really want that. Um, so now it's really about putting a designer hat on and trying to figure out what exactly I want in my scene. So I hope you found this helpful. And that's me signing off from this little performance test.